Hey guys, I've got a historical fiction for you today. This is The Witch of Blackbird Pond by Elizabeth George Spear. It's a Newbery winner as well. This one is a great story. So Kit is the main character. Um, it takes place in 1687 and she's a young lady who has been living in Barbados with her grandfather. And she's had a pretty lavish and spoiled lifestyle with him. But unfortunately, he dies, and her parents had passed away years before, which is why she was living with her grandfather. So now she has to go live with the only family she has left. And so it's her mom's sister and her husband and her cousins, and they live in the new colony in Connecticut. Um, Kit is very used to being a free spirit and, and doing whatever she wants. And the family she's going to live with are very strict Puritans. So this is going to be a major life change for her, um, getting used to such a strict lifestyle and having to abide by so many rules. Um, also within the colony, there is an older woman who lives in the woods by herself. And the people of the colony have labeled her as a witch because she's a Quaker and she's different from them. Um, Kit realizes she's not a witch and she actually befriends the old lady, but um, a lot of issues arise because of that friendship she's made with her. So um, I'm going to read you a little part of the story where she's trying to explain to the family about um, how nice this lady actually is. <gasps> you didn't, Mercy gasped. Mr. Kimberly himself? How did you ever dare, Kit? Well, I don't know, admitted Kit. Now that it was over, her knees were shaking. But he was very fair. He listened to me and he finally agreed I could have one more chance. I won't let you down again, Mercy, I promise. Well, I never thought you'd let me down, Mercy said loyally. It's just that you do have a way of surprising people. You certainly must have surprised Mr. Kimberly. He isn't known for changing his mind. I surprised myself, Kit laughed. I really can't take any credit for it, Mercy. I think I was bewitched. Bewitched? I met a witch who lives down in the meadow. It was she who gave me the courage. Mercy and her mother exchanged startled glances. You mean you talked with her? An anxious frown wrinkled Mercy's forehead. I went into her house and I ate her food, but I was joking about being bewitched. She's the gentlest little person you ever saw. You'd love her, Mercy. Kit, Aunt Rachel sat down with her heavy flat iron and regarded her niece seriously. I think you'd better not say anything to the others about meeting this woman. Why, Aunt Rachel? You, of all people? You can't believe she's a witch. No, of course not. That is just malicious gossip. But no one in Weathersfield has anything to do with Hannah Tupper. Well, why on earth not? Well, she is a Quaker. Why is that so dreadful? Rachel hesitated. I can't tell you exactly. The Quakers are queer, stubborn people. They don't believe in the sacraments. What difference does that make? She's as kind and good as, as you are, Aunt Rachel. I could swear to it. Rachel looked genuinely distressed. How can you be sure? Quakers cause trouble wherever they go. They speak out against our faith. Of course, we don't torment them here in Connecticut. In Boston, I've heard they even hanged some Quakers. This Hannah Tupper and her husband were branded and driven out of Massachusetts. They were thankful enough just to be let alone here in Weathersfield. Has she ever done any harm? No, perhaps not, though there's been talk. Kit, I know your uncle would be very angry about this. Promise me you won't go there again. Kit looked down at the floor. All her fine resolves about trying to understand and to be patient, and already she could feel the defiance rising again. You won't, will you, Kit? I can't promise that, Aunt Rachel, said Kit unhappily. I'm sorry, but I just can't. Hannah was good to me, and she's very lonely. I know you mean to be kind, insisted Rachel, but you are a very young child. You don't understand how sometimes evil can seem innocent and harmless. Tis dangerous for you to see that woman. You must believe me. Kit picked up her wool cards and set to work. She knew she looked stubborn and ungrateful, and she felt so. The hard little knot had kinked up inside her tighter than ever. Coming home through the meadow, everything had seemed so simple, and here it was all tangled again. Only one thing was sure. She had found a secret place, a place of freedom and clear sunlight and peace. Nothing, nothing that anybody could say would prevent her from going back to that place again. Okay, so it's a pretty exciting story. There are a lot of um, interesting and heartwarming things that happen in this book. So 
give it a try and let me know what you think.